Hi, I'm Dan Rosenzweig, President and CEO of Habitat for Humanity of Greater Charlottesville. And on behalf of everybody at Habitat, I'd like to thank you for participating in our strategic planning process. We really appreciate your gift of time and thought. Your feedback is invaluable to us as we develop new strategies to meet the local housing need. The numbers are staggering. There's a regional deficit of 16,000 units and 3,000 existing units are considered substandard. And when you drill down, you find other key indicators that should have us all concerned. 200 children are considered homeless. 850 local families are on a persistent waiting list for housing choice vouchers. One out of every two Charlottesville residents is considered cost burdened by housing, meaning they pay more than they can afford. There simply isn't enough quality affordable housing to meet the need. What you're looking at is a city commission study by the Robert Charles Lesser Company, and it confirms the shortage. There's virtually no suitable and available inventory for our neighbors who earn less than 50% of area median income. And the consequences of this imbalance are profoundly disturbing. When our children don't have access to safe, reliable shelter, their grades suffer, health outcomes worsen, segregation and isolation increases. Additionally, traditional approaches to neighborhood scale revitalization have taken a top-down approach resulting in gentrification, displacement, loss of opportunity, and generational poverty. And we all pay. At Habitat, we recognized these challenges and changed our approach about a decade ago. Where we once built single, isolated homes, we began building and rebuilding mixed-income communities. This new paradigm for affordable housing has led us to focus on higher density developments, near jobs and public transportation. We build sustainably, creating the most energy efficient homes in the area. And we reject the notion that neighborhoods must be separated by age, income, race, and all those other factors that tend to keep us apart. See, our communities are welcoming to everybody. This new paradigm has led us to unprecedented success. We're approaching our 200th home built in partnership with hardworking local partner families. We transform Sunrise from a trailer park to a thriving mixed income community of front porches, back porches and open space. And we did so without displacing the residents who have called it home for decades. Sunrise is the nation's first trailer park transformation without resident displacement. And since the completion of Sunrise, our mixed income new paradigm has really taken off. We've now been part of building or rebuilding six local mixed income communities with many more on horizon. It's part of Project 20, our effort to scale up in order to keep a promise to the community that we would complete a minimum of 20 homes annually. But we can do more, and doing more starts with Southwood. Southwood is this community's best remaining opportunity to get it right, to transform the area's largest concentration of poverty into a national model of success, a thriving mixed income community inclusive of all current Southwood residents, market rate purchasers, and a neighborhood commercial center. Southwood is huge and it's full of potential. It's a community of families who are invested in their children's future. It's diverse, hardworking, community oriented, but it's also aging with failing infrastructure and trailers that present significant health and safety concerns. See, we're currently working side by side with Southwood families to learn what's important to them, what their vision is, and most importantly, what they're willing to do to carry out that vision. Southwood is the future of affordable housing here in Charlottesville and nationally, and it's gonna take all of us working together to make it a reality. And as we work with Southwood community members to plan their future, we know we can't rest. We need to continue looking ahead to strategize about how to eliminate the conditions that cause housing poverty in the first place. Ultimately, we can't simply build our way out of the crisis. The need is too great. So our planning process began by considering expansion of the strategy by our parent organization, Habitat for Humanity International. See, four years ago, Habitat International followed our lead here in Charlottesville and began to think beyond the house. What resulted was a global strategic plan designed to acknowledge and address the fact that for the first time in human history, we're more urban than rural. And this historic diaspora has put unprecedented pressure on housing. See, for the first 40 years of Habitat's existence, Habitat International focused on core partnership home building and helped more than a million people build a better future. And over the course of the next few years, we're all building on these impacts and taking a three-pronged approach. This three-faceted global strategic plan calls for us to look for ways to affect better housing outcomes more broadly by bringing together market and political forces to create sector and societal impact. The blue house you're looking at relates to us refining and improving our existing building and rebuilding strategies. That is building on what's working. The purple house relates to market development. And the orange house calls for us to help influence hearts, minds, and policy. In short, to build louder. And it's working. In the first two years of the plan, we've accelerated our impact and helped almost 10 million people worldwide achieve better housing. 
So we've revised our goals from 4 million people supported to 26 million. Let me give you a couple of examples of how we're creating sector and societal impact. In Peru, where we were building about 20 homes annually, we began working with local NGOs and financial institutions to help them originate low-interest microloans to families living in slum conditions. As a result, in two years, more than a million Peruvians have upgraded their homes, converting dirt floors to concrete, adding a permanent roof for a sanitary bathroom. And in Bolivia, where the primary issue was tenure security, we organized the School for Women Leaders. Just a couple of years ago, women were not even allowed to be included on the title of their homes. Every day, women and children would be thrown out into the street when their family situation changed. In response, Habitat organized the School for Women Leaders, and after two years, they were able to change the law such that now, 1.8 million women and children in Bolivia know that they can come home to their house day after day. The success of this global plan has us asking ourselves hard questions about what we can do locally to increase our impact. How can we continue to be ahead of the curve in terms of housing innovation? Can we improve our building work to serve more people? Can we better support more not yet ready applicants? Can we help change local conditions that contribute to the crisis? Can we catalyze new approaches within the local housing sector to help stimulate and advantage affordable housing? Can we be a leader in creating greater efficiency in the affordable housing realm? And like the global plan, our strategic work is focused on three realms, building, rebuilding, and what we're now calling force multiplying, which involves both market and societal development. Make no mistake, Building will always be the core of what we do. Working side by side with families, building them up as they build a better future will always be our central focus. And we'll continue to be pioneers in the rebuilding realm, working side by side with neighbors as they utilize their inherent strengths to revitalize and rebuild. But as part of our planning, we're also committed to exploring the extent to which we can increase our impact through the facilitation of better housing outcomes more broadly. After all, when a family achieves sustainable, safe housing, Regardless of whether or not it's in a Habitat home, children's grades and health outcomes improve and we all win. Your focus group will be asked to comment on opportunities and challenges within one, two, or all three of our primary planning realms. Over 25 years, we've been so blessed with the support of so many in the community. Side by side, we've been able to accomplish a lot from helping almost 200 families build the home of their dreams, to preserving affordable housing opportunities for more than 2,000 of our most vulnerable neighbors, to setting a national standard for how to redevelop without gentrification or displacement. Together, we've made a real difference in people's lives. And as we look forward to the next 25 years, it's now time to think even bigger. Your input will be critical as we chart a course forward, as we plan for the day when every man, woman, and child in this community can find a safe, decent, affordable place to live. So thanks again for stepping up. We're so much looking forward to hearing your ideas.